In this last assignment, we'll be working with DICOM images. Um, these are images derived from medical imaging techniques like CT scanning. And these have been downloaded from, in this case, the Digital Morphology Museum. Uh, this is in Kyoto, Japan. And they make these freely available of primate uh, specimens. A lot of these are from the zoo. And we're looking at an adult uh, chimp specimen and a juvenile specimen. And over the course of these tutorials, I will demonstrate the workflow for uh, dealing with this data uh, on the adult specimen, and you will have to replicate that, but then also apply the same workflow to the juvenile specimen. The idea is that you've, uh, ultimately you're going to create an illustration that compares the structure of the two forms. So all the data about the CT scan is included here. Um, and about the specimen where they're from. This is a five day old infant, for example, but I've already downloaded this for you. So I'll be giving you these two stacks of DICOM images. Um, and what these are um, simply are um, images of sections through the specimen. So a CT scan works with x-rays measuring the differential density of tissues within the specimen. X-rays are passed through and the density of the material they pass through is registered and recorded. We can use that data to then reconstruct 3D forms um, from these stacks of 2D images. So let's look at how we do this. And by the end of this tutorial, we'll wind up with something like this. Okay, so I'm just going to quit out of 3D Slicer. Now this is uh, a freely available open source piece of software. So if I just do a search for 3D Slicer, you can go to three or slicer.org and you can download this too. It's either it works on a Mac or a PC. Uh, it's no longer in development as far as I know, but uh, it is freely available and it works very well for what we have to do. So when you download it, you'll get um, an application like this and I'll just launch Slicer here so you can see how it opens up and we'll, I'll walk you through the interface a little bit. So Slicer is a modular type of application in that it is uh, has an interface, but then you interact with it by loading different modules that do different things. Our use of 3D Slicer will be very simple in some ways in that we only use a couple of the modules here. Um, but when it opens up, you'll see the first module and this is the welcome to slicer module and this gives you some information about the the project and how you can access their website and things like that but all of the other modules that we'll be using can be found in this drop down menu here um, this shows the history of the modules you've used recently and then there are some core modules that are listed here and we'll be using some of these uh, in particular, we'll be using the volume rendering module, the editor module, and the model making module, which we get to through the editor. But let's first start uh, and look at how we get data into 3D Slicer. And the simplest way to do it is the drag and drop method. So once you download these stacks of uh, DICOM images, you can simply grab the folder uh, that houses them and drag it into this environment. So you'll be asked uh, what reader you want to use, so you can just say OK to the first option here, load directory into DICOM database. And then you want to probably, uh, in this case, copy. Now you're going to have to um, save all this stuff onto a, um, a removable hardware or uh, a, a drive or onto Dropbox or something like that. So I'll just copy this and 
So it's downloading the DCM files, either the DICOM files. You can see I've done this a number of times already. I've got some other images in here, and it will just come in again. So what it tells us is that we have one new patient. So this is medical imaging usually used for humans. Uh, 317 new studies, series instances. So these are the number of images uh, or slices through the specimen that we have. Say OK. And you won't have all of these different ones here. You'll just have one. But this is Pantroglodytes versus the Hazuko one. And once I do that, you can see it just highlights a couple of things down here and we can just load that now. And so you may have a slightly different interface than mine. I think the default interface will be the 4-up interface. And so what you're seeing here is the red slice, yellow slice, and green slice. And these are through different uh, directions of section. So here you can see the shape of the chimp skull. Here's the brow and the, the, the uh, incisor teeth. And so this is in the sagittal section. The yellow is the sagittal section. Um, this is, let me just double check. This is in the coronal section. So um, as if it was a slice going straight down that went through both of your ears. Sounds horrible, I know. Uh, and then this is the transverse section. So this is if it went um, is a horizontal plane going through. Now this, in this case, the um, chimp is not perfectly centered in the world, but that's okay. So you can see that I can scrub through the stack of images in these different sections. So this specimen wasn't physically sliced, but the x-rays generate sections um, in all dimensions like this. So we can view in all of these different transverse coronal and sagittal sections. And if you are scrubbing through and you want, you find something of interest, so here we're seeing what look like the ethmoidal sinuses. If I want to see that on the other images, if I hold down shift and then move my mouse over the green slice here, you can see the other ones trying to keep up with what I'm looking at here in the image. So if I move over to the orbit, you can see the sagittal section is moving into a section through the orbit where you can see part of the eyeball here. So what you're seeing here are representations in color values going from black to white of different densities of tissue in the specimen. And in this case, the densest tissue is bone. And the densest tissue shows up as white. You can see the teeth here up in the red section and part of the brain case and the orbit here. And so we can use this differential density to extract different pieces of anatomy. Now, luckily, we're just dealing with the two, ex well, two fairly extreme densities between soft tissue of just the outer skin and the uh, bone, which is the densest tissue. So it's actually quite easy to separate. If you need to separate out something like kidney or liver, uh, then this differences with surrounding organ, uh, organs is much more subtle and difficult to extract. So when you are in one of these windows, if you left mouse button and drag down, you can increase the brightness. Drag up, you can decrease the brightness. And left and right works with contrast. It kind of does the same thing. This is not changing your images in any way. It's just changing your view of them. So if I'm trying to pick out, you know, areas within the bone, and so I can see... Um, parts of the cancellous bone inside uh, the, the, the solid table of bone around them. I can work with the, um, the contrast just to try and pick out that detail. Now extracting that detail is a different story and we'll look at that in a bit. So what the first thing we can do from this is to generate a 3D representation of our model here. And we do that using the volume rendering module. And so you can see I oops, use the drop down menu here to go to volume rendering. And in the window that opens, um, we'll find the following rendering module. 
Now, I have to say 3D Slicer is probably not well known for its inviting user interface, uh, but it works. So we're in the volume rendering module here, and our volume is called volume, comma, one, comma, volume. Not a great name. We could rename it if we wanted to, but since we're just working with one in this file, it's fine. And we can turn on, this is a closed eye, click on that, and it will load a 3D representation into this view. Now, it may take some time. It's fairly memory and computationally expensive to do, so you just have to give it some time. But while we're waiting, if you want to navigate around in here, the left mouse button will just tumble your view. So it's different than Maya. You don't need to hold down the option key. The right mouse button will zoom you in and out. Oh, and it's lagging, so it just popped in there. So now there is my volume. If I want to center it in the world, there's this little button up here in the 3D view. It's called Center the 3D View on the Scene. So we click on that and it goes into the middle. So what we're seeing is a volume of space that's representing those different uh, density differentials. And where we look at a, a 2D image and see pixels, when we look at a 3D image like this that's space filled, we see voxels. If you play Minecraft, you're probably familiar with that. So if we want to take away all of this part in the cylinder, so this chimp's head was in uh, a cylindrical space and the air is even being represented by voxels now. So here in the volume rendering module, if we just start to drag this shift slider, we can change what's included and excluded. So I'm going to pull it over to the right and you'll start to see the air starting to disappear and just leaving us with the soft tissue of the chimp. So you can see that this is a fairly refined um, scan. You can see some of the internal structure. This is not a living specimen. Uh, an autopsy had been performed, but you can see uh, the vertebra here. Uh, inside uh, the oral cavity here and the outer expression of the face and the teeth, mandible, uh, maxilla, and everything else in there. So one thing to know is that this is not the model that we extract. This is a representation of what the model can look like um, while we're working. What we're going to do instead is to pick out the different um, areas of very dense voxels in these 2D representations. This volume rendering is useful just to see what we can get out of the model. And in fact, we don't even need to have this turned on after a while um, if it's causing your computer to lag. And if you want to turn that off in the volume rendering module, just turn off the eyeball again. So when we come back, we're going to look at um, the segmentation process. And segmentation is picking out areas of differential density um, and marking them off with different colors.